connected speech in English is a variation of English speech in which words are connected in a continuous spoken language that is often heard in typical English conversations. It's called connected speech because the words are all connected, having sounds that run from one text to another. This topic is very significant in English speech because it composes almost all English conversations and it's very common to hear. First, it's better to learn this topic on paper and then diving into the hearing of the English language will make conversations easier to understand. Speaking English naturally, the way I'm speaking now, is very different from speaking English directly. In English, we can reduce words when speaking, contract them, and then connect them. For native speakers, this topic may be simple, but for those who learn to speak English, this lesson will make a lot of sense. In my opinion, both for native and non-native speakers, this subject will present how English truly sounds. So let's get into it. In English, there are five types of connected speech. Cadenation, also known as linking, intrusion, elision, assimilation, and geminates. The names may be complicated, but don't worry about them for now. Cadenation, or linking, happens when at the end of a word, a consonant sound gets attached to the first vowel sound at the beginning of the following word. As a reminder, a vowel is a speech sound made without constricting the vocal tract, like A, E, I, O, U, and a consonant is a speech sound produced by constriction. An example of that is an apple. An apple. This phrase has two words, and I'm intentionally pronouncing it as two words. An apple. This is the direct pronunciation that many learners would say, but when native speakers say it, it's pronounced as one word. An apple. An apple. The N in an connects with the A sound in apple, and in terms of speech, it becomes almost like a single word. An apple. In some cases, the sound of the consonant will change when it's linked. For instance, if I say that orange each word is pronounced directly. That orange. But if I say that orange, the final consonant t would sound like d because it sounds like one word. That orange. That orange. This concept, again in terms of speech, catenates or links the last letter of one word to the first letter of a second word, thus making one sound. Other examples are trip over and hang out. These are prepositional verbs and they make sense when directly said, but when put in conversation, they will sound like one word. If I say, I tripped over, the consonant sound d will sound like t, so the sounds are linked. I tripped over. If I say, let's hang out, I am not splitting the pronunciation, and therefore, hang out sounds like one word. Let's hang out. Other examples with more practical context are He is in the garden. I used to work. He had to stop. She had it in the office. While my speech is extremely direct, it's not really how you would hear the sentences in connected speech. By using cadenation, here's the linked pronunciation of each phrase. He's in the garden. I used to work. He had to stop. She had it in the office. As you can hear, the linked pronunciation forces letter to connect to one word and make a new sound. This is cadenation in English connected speech, and it's by far the most common speech that you will hear almost everywhere in English conversations. Intrusion is another concept, and it happens when a supplemental letter is forced between two words, thus becoming an intrusive sound. If one word ends with a vowel, and the next word begins with a vowel, there should not be a pause between the words. The intrusive sound is often Y, W, or R. Some examples are he asked, do it, there is. This is the direct pronunciation, but to make it intrusive, we add a supplemental letter in between the words. Again, this happens in connected speech. He asked, he asked. 
Do it. Do it. There is. There is. Other examples are go over. How are you? I ate. You know it. He is. Will buy it. The intrusive pronunciation would be go over. Go over. How are you? How are you? I ate. I ate. You know it. You know it. He is. He is. We'll buy it. We'll buy it. Elision is the next concept, and it happens when the last sound of a word disappears. When that happens, two words will sound like one word with a missing letter. By definition, elision is the removal of a sound when speaking. In an English connected speech, it mainly happens with the t and d sounds. Some examples are next door and most common. This is the direct pronunciation, but in connected speech, they will sound like one word with one removed sound. Next door. Next door. Most common. Most common. Elision also happens when a vowel sound in an unstressed syllable disappears. For instance, different and interesting can be pronounced without the central vowels. Different. Different. Interesting. Interesting. Additionally, native English speakers also remove other consonants and can connect two words into one. Some examples are give me, friendly, must be. With removed letters, the pronunciation will be give me, give me, friendly, friendly, must be, must be. The next concept is assimilation, and it happens when sounds mix to make a completely new sound. This process makes it easier to pronounce combinations of sounds, which helps with fluency. A very common example of assimilation is the word could with you. Could you help me? To make an assimilated pronunciation, we mix could with you, and it will sound like this. Could you help me? Could you help me? The sound of d in could combines with you to make could you, and this is because it's a type of assimilation called palatalization. This happens when a word ending in a d, z, or z sound is followed by a word beginning with a w sound, so the two sounds assimilate and palatalization occurs. Some examples are would you mind? What did you do? Does your friend cook? Has your plane landed? An assimilated pronunciation will be Would you mind? Would you mind? What did you do? What did you do? Does your friend cook? Does your friend cook? Has your plane landed? Has your plane landed? Some of these have informal contractions, like ya, ja, which is another topic for English speech. I'll explain it in the next video. The palatalization patterns of d, z, or z also have counterparts. When a word ending in t, s, or t is followed by a word beginning with a w sound, the two sounds assimilate. Some examples are I got you. I bet you I can win. She will meet you. What's your name? It's your lucky day. It hurts you. An assimilated pronunciation will be I gotcha. I gotcha. I betcha I can win. I bet ya I can win. She will meet ya. She will meet ya. What's your name? What's your name? It's your lucky day. It's your lucky day. It hurts ya. 
it hurts you. The last category of English connected speech is geminate. By definition, geminates are a repetition of a speech sound and in connected speech, two of the same consonants sound as one. When a first word ends with the same consonant sound that the next word begins with, we put the sounds together and elongate them. In this connection, we'll say only one sound of that letter, and in English conversations, it's the least used connected speech, but it's still very significant. Some examples are single ladies, social life, pet turtle, I want to eat. In this case, the deferring pronunciation will remove the repetitive consonant sounds. Single ladies, single ladies, social life, social life, pet turtle, pet turtle, I want to eat, I want to eat. Notice that in none of these cases the spelling changes, so it is the sounds that change when we say them. Understanding connected speech is very important, especially when you're trying to speak English naturally. Across the examples that I gave, this is how native English speakers talk. So listening to connected speech and being able to analyze it is very vital. On the other hand, memorizing connected speech is not important because native speakers don't need you to use connected speech to understand you. If you speak English carefully and pronounce each sound, you may sound a bit unnatural, but you will be understood. The best way to understand it and utilize it is to listen to it as frequently as possible. You can even record yourself and have conversations with native English speakers and at that point, talking naturally will come with time. It's very critical to understand that connected speech is about practice, not memorization. The names of the connected speeches that I showed are not needed for memorization, so it's objectively better to listen to connected speech and speak it. Connected speech doesn't come randomly, as it's easier to say the words in that way. In the end, natural speaking will come with time, so this is how connected speech works in English.